Hey, Heath. Hey, Kevin. So what part of your electrical world are we talking about today? Ground fault circuit interrupters. Ah, GFCI. GFCI. Which is yeah. what? So it's there for personal protection. So a ground fault happens when we have something from the hot conductor making contact with a non-current carrying metal part. Oh. Uh, Something like that? the, I know it's a long worded way of saying the metal box, uh, a pipe, or picture being around water. If you're going to plug something in and you're standing where it might be damp, you've got a potential for current to leak somewhere if you're having a failure in that particular device. So ideally, the current is running through the wires contained within mm -hmm. the system. Totally sealed. But there are chances where you become part of that system. Sure, if you have a cord that chases, you have an appliance that has a failure, if something happens like yeah. that and the current's able to get out, we want to have some way to protect you. Yeah, because that could be kind of nasty. So been around for a while, right? I mean, it's been around since I think the early 60s and been required uh, in some areas in the 70s of the houses. Yeah, in terms of where it's required, you said water, and I think of these things as having sure. to be in kitchens for sure. Yep. Um, and bathrooms too. Bathrooms, bathrooms are critical. Kitchens, we need them outside. You know, anywhere you might plug something in outdoors, your basement's damp, anything like that, garage, mm -hmm. you know, plenty of other areas in the home as well. So what's the smarts? How are they actually working and what are they doing? So what they're doing is they operate by sensing how much current's being used by a device. So when you plug something in, it's using a certain amount of current. This wants to see the same amount of current on both sides coming in and going back out. If it sees something as small as five milliamps of a difference, it knows it's losing current somewhere and it shuts down to protect you. That's a tiny amount? Tiny, tiny amount. It's thinking it went to water, it went to a metal pipe, it went somewhere that it shouldn't go, so it shuts down. So if I'm in the kitchen and I plug a blender in, there mm -hmm. should be a balance between that current right there. Exactly. But if my hand is wet and I become part of that, some of that current comes to me, it says out of balance. Shuts right down. Make sure you stay safe. Okay, cool. Um, I've seen them before, but tell us how we know we are GFCI protected. So the easiest way is we have one like this. You can see those test and reset buttons right in the middle. Yeah. That's the easiest indicator. And this particular one has an actual green light to tell you that it's on. And we can plug this tester in to show you that it's actually working. So because this lights up right there. Right. Yep. And to verify that it's operating properly, we can press that button on the top. Okay. There's still power to the device, but nothing coming out. So when you plug something in, it's not gonna work. Th those buttons allow us to then put it back in place. Yep, back on. Gotcha, and with it back on, we can now show that, that it's, it's working, working no problem at all. Okay, so if I see an outlet that looks like this, I know I'm protected. That at least that receptacle is protected, correct. That receptacle. Right. How do I protect other receptacles? You get this question a lot. I don't have a GFI in my bathroom. I know I should have one. I don't have one in a couple of bathrooms. One downstairs does. Why? It actually protects from this first one. will protect that second one. Wait, so you're telling me that this one, yep. which is GFCI, I can tell that, Correct. is connected to this one, it and is. therefore the protection comes with it? Exactly. How do I know that? So if you have a tester like that, go ahead and push the button. This guy here? That guy there. Ooh. Shuts that down. So that turned that off and popped that. Can we do that again? That's so satisfying. <laughs> so that's working. This is working. Right. But I know that if I were to... Ah. So it was very common that if you had, let's say, three bathrooms in the house, the very first bathroom closest to the panel, they'd run the power from the panel to the, put the GFI there. Then from this point, they'd go to the other receptacles. So they'd come into what's called the line terminal on the GFCI and then come out on the load. So it literally tells you where you have to go. So line is up here Line's and up it top. wants to load down on the bottom. Exactly. So power coming into the line and back out to other receptacles to the load. So you'd have your line conductor to there, and, and your, your load, load down conductor bottom. down to there. Right, so how this works is we'd have this coming in and going to this, it's the exact same thing. So you're telling me this is the line coming in, right. you've hooked it up to the place that says line, yeah. and then this is the load coming out. And that goes to the next receptacle. And then if we turn it around and we see what we're looking at, basically we're looking at what we've got here. It's so doing the exact same thing. I know that's protected, because yep. it's the right receptacle, but because it's tied to this, this is protected as That's well. That's protected as well. And I could do another one, just a thumb sure. receptacle you all the way down? keep going down, and those are all protected from that point forward. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. If I don't wire this correctly, do I lose my protection down here? Am I worried that I'm not protected? You won't even get that far. So that's another common problem is when someone replaces these, it's very easy to confuse which one's line and which one's load. If you put those wires on backwards, this won't even reset. Uh. This will stay off and you won't even be able to turn that on. This will never have power. No, so when you put it back in and you can't get it to reset and you're wondering why, chances are it got wired backwards. And then that means that this won't have power. Exactly. All the way down. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a nice It locks you out and keeps you safe. A little fail safe. Oh, that's very cool. Okay, so that's th th those are the only two ways I can tell that I've protected. I can either physically look at it mm -hmm. or I can go for the testing 
and say that this one's connected. Exactly. And one other thing, if you trip this and you don't see one of these, but you see this shut off and you didn't have one of these pop, there's one other option is you might actually have a GFCI breaker in the panel instead. It's rare. It's not as common as these because they're more expensive, but does the same thing. Nice. I love it, Heath. Thank you. All right. I'm going to test don't, the old fashioned. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.